Hi everyone, welcome to the session. Um, it's just half past, so we're going to give it a couple of minutes to let a few more people join, and then we'll be kicking off. Um, just to let you know, unfortunately, uh, Seam has not been able to join us tonight, but we do have uh, Richard and Chistel with us, so they'll be introducing themselves in a little, little while. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think, we, like Liz said, I think we're just going to give it a few more minutes, wait for a few more people to attend, um, give them a chance to, to join the session, and then we'll kick off in about two minutes. I think we'll just give it one more minute um, for a few more people to join. And then we'll kick off with the session. OK, so I think we'll start the session now. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so my name is Richard Perich Matthews. Um, I'm business development manager at Patient Access. Um, I've been at EMIS for just over five years and done a number of different roles uh, in the community pharmacy division. And then for the last two years, I've been working with um, Patient Access and our Patient Access division to launch uh, the patient access marketplace and patient access for professionals. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, increasing revenue with patient access for professionals and use of patient access for professionals. Um, so we're going to do a small introduction quickly for those of you who aren't familiar with patient access for professionals. So we'll talk a little bit about patient access marketplace um, and then patient access for professionals. Uh, we'll then move on to some top tips for how you can increase your bookings and how you can drive more revenue into your pharmacy with patient access for professionals. Um, then I'm going to introduce our special guest for this session, Chittal Patel. Uh, Chittal is superintendent pharmacist at Murray's Chemist and Travel Clinic. Um, they've been using patient access for professionals for a little over 18 months now and have seen some real success. So Chittal has kindly agreed to join us and tell us a little bit about his experience with PA Pro. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have a short Q&A session. Um, so if you do have any questions throughout the session, please do add them to the chat. Um, and then at the end, we'll go through as many of those as possible uh, and answer them. If you could leave your names and your email addresses uh, when you put your questions down, that will just give us an opportunity to get back to anyone who we don't get to answer the questions for. So I'll make sure that next week um, I and the team will reach out to whomever's question we don't get around to answering. Um, we'll also share some contact details at the end for myself uh, and for the community pharmacy sales team. So if anyone has any questions or wants to reach out, they can get in contact with, with the team from there. So the first thing which I wanted to, to touch on very quickly in this session was the patient access marketplace. Why did we launch the patient access marketplace? You will have heard maybe if you've logged in or, or, or attended any of the earlier EMIS live sessions uh, earlier this week. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about changes to the funding and remuneration models for pharmacy and um, the profession moving from a dispensing based model to a service based model. Uh, future introduction of hub and spoke, you know, less time is going to be spent in pharmacies preparing and dispensing medication and there'll be more time available for providing services and delivering services to patients in the local community. Um, and of course, the growth of distance selling pharmacies and internet pharmacies means it's more important than ever for community pharmacy to be offering a range of services that they can offer to their local patients. Um, 
So for that reason, that was um, some of the key drivers behind us launching the patient access marketplace. We really wanted to help pharmacies capitalise on this opportunity um, and the need to reduce the demand on already stretched urgent care and GP services. I, for one, find it extremely difficult to get a GP appointment when I need to. So having local community pharmacies that offer a wide range of services for me is particularly important. Um, and supporting those pharmacies with technology so that you can increase and grow efficiently the number of services that you offer, market those to your patients effectively and make sure that they can reach you, book services with you easily, you know, without having to call, without having to email, stuff such as that. They get a clean and efficient booking mechanism into you. So as some of you may be familiar, um, patient access is one of the leading patient facing services apps in the UK. It can be used on web or or, uh, or mobile app. Um, on any given day of the week, it's in the top five medical apps uh, on both the iOS and Google App Store. Um, in and amongst, you know, reading all the health advice that we have on patient.info, booking GP appointments, um, ordering your repeat medication and viewing, sharing, downloading a medical record, patients can also book a whole host of services through the marketplace. Um, so this is from my personal uh, patient access account and you'll see here. Sorry, your practice currently does not have any appointments available. That's a message I often see um, and when I call them, they push me to patient access to book appointments. I think they release a, a couple every morning. So there's a real. There's a real demand amongst patients to access services outside of their GP practice, especially when they're being greeted with messages like this on a regular basis. So very quickly for all of you, for, for any of you that don't know about patient access for professionals. Um, it offers a number of different functionalities, uh, one being. It's an appointment management system, so a calendar system for you to use in the pharmacy so you can book your walk ins, manage um, any appointments which you have. It's also a service and e commerce management system so you can take in app payments from patient access. So, uh, when we first launched the marketplace, patients were able to book without the need to pay and um, confirm their booking, well, yeah, pay for their booking. So now that you have that ability, it's much less likely that patients will cancel and that they will attend those appointments. You also get financial reports, so you get an overview and you get detailed reports of reconciliation. Uh, you can manage a number of different branches so you can control access between different user levels for your group. If you have multiple branches, uh, you can manage your branch effectively. You can manage your user access effectively uh, through a number of different user access roles. Um, and then you also have support like you have with patient access uh, with the ProScript Connect, sorry, Emis Web and any other of our products. So the first top tip, um, which happens more often um, than you might imagine, is making sure that your services have been attributed to a calendar. So it's often that people will go onto PA Pro and they'll add a new service, but what they may do is they may forget to attribute it to a calendar. So what you need to do is that any new. So this is an example on the left, which we had. So we had a pharmacy which started offering um, a range of different blood tests. They'd added the services to the branch, but they hadn't attributed those services to a calendar. So by not attributing the service to a calendar, those bookings, those services weren't available for patients to book when they were searching on the platform. So. One thing which I would remind people always to do is to make sure that once they've added a new service to their branch, that they then go into the branch calendar and they tick and attribute those services to those calendars. Um, another top tip, um, which also might feature in this month's um, patient access newsletter, is reducing booking cutoff time. So we have some data um, we, we obviously have um, telemetry throughout the whole of the patient access app, but what we tend to find is that uh, where services have long booking cutoff time, so in some instances they're probably unavoidable. So I know cervical cancer vaccine, uh, chickenpox vaccine, maybe not something you carry in stock and something which you need to order in, so maybe needs a booking cutoff time, um, 24 hours or so. But if you have um, prolonged booking cutoff times on any of your services, 
what we tend to find is that that puts off customers from booking. So having a much immediate availability as possible. So as you can see in the screenshot below, um, well man blood profile and well woman blood profile here. By having no booking cutoff, you're allowing patients to book immediately that same day. And we tend to find that services and pharmacies with shorter booking cutoff times and no booking cutoff times actually get more bookings than others. Um, the second bit of advice here would be to open up popular booking times. So from the data which we have available to us, we can also see that the most popular times for patients to book appointments are between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning. And I, I know that you know not all pharmacies are open at that time, but by making sure that you're open for appointments as early as possible and as late as possible in the day, those really you can really capitalize on those popular booking times and make sure that patients can get those 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. slots and 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. slots. Those are by far the most popular booking times amongst patients who are booking and looking for appointments and patient access. Um, so this is really the, the key driver here um, for making sure you get the most success out of patient access. It's offering the right blend of services uh, and overall increasing the number of services available. So what we have here, um, which I pulled earlier this week, um, is the most in-demand services on patient access in rank order in terms of number of searches. Um, and the one thing which I find really, really interesting is since we launched blood testing and COVID testing um, in Q3 of last year, I think it was August or September time, we've seen those services have shot straight to the top of the most in-demand services amongst patients. So in the top 10, I think you have allergy blood profile, then you've got three um, COVID tests. So one is a uh, an antibody test, which is a phlebotomy service in a laboratory. Um, fit to fly testing, very, very popular. Um, and then down here towards the end of the top 40 services are where you start to see your standard PGDs and um, asthma emergency inhaler supply, salbutamol inhaler, cystitis UTI test and treat. But these are the top services which I would recommend focusing on um, if you really want to maximise your bookings and, and capitalise on the demand which we see amongst patient access users. Um, so if we look at the top 20 most in demand services amongst patients at the moment, you'll see that only two of these um, are actually PGDs and they're at the very bottom of those top 20 services. Oh, sorry, three. You have hay fever treatments and con or four and contraceptive pill supply. Um, but 16 of those top 20 services are new services which we've launched in the past um, in the past 11 months. So COVID testing fit to fly, um, allergy blood test, general health blood profile, full thyroid blood profile, full blood count blood profile. We see the number of those searches um, amongst patients hasn't reduced at all. The demand is um, exceptionally high. And as we've added more and more suppliers offering those services, the number of bookings has grown exponentially. Um, of course, PGDs will always remain a staple of the marketplace and offering the most in demand PGDs is super, super important too. So on the right here is where you'll see um, the top 15 most in demand PGDs. If anyone does have questions about, you know, what services are in demand, um, we send out a regular newsletter. Um, between every month and every six weeks, we send out a newsletter. Um, if you're not receiving that newsletter, please reach out to us and we'll make sure we add you to the distribution list. But all org admins should be receiving that newsletter. Um, and in that newsletter, we'll often put you know, top PGD services that you should be offering and then top blood testing and other services that you could be offering to maximise on revenue. Uh, we also have the ability to report on that data by region. So we can tell you around your city or area or town what services are, are particularly popular and we can give you insights into that data so that you can make sure you're offering um, the most popular service in your area and the services that are most in demand amongst your patients. So one uh, example which I wanted to share um, 
and this isn't Chittles Pharmacy, this is another pharmacy in the London area, uh, is a pharmacy that's offering, I think they're offering around 80 different services uh, in their pharmacy, and this is one branch. Um, so over the last 12 months, including COVID, they've generated £47,000 worth of gross revenue. And what's really, really interesting is that the bulk of that revenue has come from um, some, the majority from new services that we've started offering in the last nine months. So Well Woman Blood Profile has generated almost £10,000 worth of revenue. Uh, COVID-19 antibody testing, £5,000 worth of revenue. Um, they had a lot of flu stock, this branch, I know from speaking with them. Um, so they really, really maximised on their flu vaccinations. And they were also quite clever with their pricing. Um, there were lots of pharmacies which were offering flu at very, very discounted prices, and I think it almost flew off the shelves. Um, and then um, I know that it was difficult with stock last season, but this pharmacy was one of the ones that was offering it at around the £25 mark from very, very early, and they and they were consistently getting bookings all the way into the back end of December at that £25, £30 mark for those flu bookings. Um, as you can see further down the list, we have cervical cancer vaccination. They've still done well on um, hepatitis B vaccination. But what I'd like to draw everyone's attention to on this call is just how much revenue um, blood testing and COVID testing, fit to fly PCR testing has generated for this pharmacy. Uh, over the last 12 months, they've had almost 3,000 bookings and in very, very small um, font, you can see down at the bottom that two and a half thousand of those bookings were for private services and just under 500 were for NHS uh, or free services that they offer at that pharmacy. So just an example of how much revenue can be generated if you're offering the right blend and mix of services. And if you've got the right amount of um, availability open for patients to book those services. So I know some of you won't know about blood testing uh, and COVID-19 testing or, or, or the providers that offer those. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to speak to you about today was uh, the providers that can help you get set up. I know some people on the call will already be offering the services and doing particularly well out of them. Uh, there are a number of different providers that you can work with. Um, we're agnostic to whomever you choose to work with, but we have uh, partnered up with a lab uh, based in London called London Medical Laboratory who offer in pharmacy laboratory services. So London Medical Laboratory um, offer blood tests and COVID-19 tests at wholesale prices directly to your pharmacy. Um, they don't charge you anything up front, so they'll provide you with uh, boxes, test kits, sample collection equipment, so tubes, needles, lancets. Um, they can also help you with training. So if you'd like to train up any of your pharmacy staff as phlebotomists, they can help you with phlebotomy training. Um, they also have a really, really neat UI for um, an online order portal. So ordering the blood tests and, and monitoring that your patients have received their blood test results. That's all done through a, a UI, um, um, a user portal which they have online. So it's got a really, really neat UI, which I think everyone who's using it already finds really, really useful um, and easy to use. Um, and they also offer and will help with access to courier services to collect samples and return them to the lab. And um, so if your pharmacy is within London, within the M25, they also have a full in-house courier network of, of mopeds and scooters. So once you log that a test result has been, uh, a test has been taken or booked for a patient, they'll send someone around on a scooter to come and pick up that sample and bring it back to the laboratory before sending out the results to the, to the patient. Um, I wanted to give a, a small example of just how profitable these services can be for pharmacy. So in the top right hand corner here, you'll see a, a revenue example for a well, well woman or well man blood test. Um, so this is a profile with over 50 different biomarkers that patients will get a report on. Um, so the retail price is 150 pounds and the wholesale price for that test is 90 pounds. London Medical Laboratory will recommend that you charge a phlebotomy charge for drawing that blood for the patient. So that can be anywhere up to 30 pounds. That's an optional charge that you can add on. And then the gross margin for the service is, is 90 pounds. So you can see, you know, I think 
40 or 50 percent profit margins on some of these blood tests um, and if you look at some of the volumes on on the previous slide that some of the pharmacies in london and outside of london i might add are receiving for these services there's a lot of money and a lot of revenue to be generated here from these services um, london medical laboratory will also provide you with home testing kits so they'll provide you with boxes that you can advertise in your in your store and on your shelving um, that patients can purchase in store take those test kits home do a fingerprint themselves and send the sample back to the lab in a in a free post um, bag which is provided in the test kit and then patients will receive those um, results back directly from the doctor so patients will get a laboratory analysis of their samples with all their biomarkers if doctors review or intervention is required a, a doctor from the laboratory will call the patient and they'll send out um, a full breakdown of the blood test results to patients uh, directly via email so if anyone is interested in getting set up with these services and um, they can also help you with COVID-19 testing services um, we'll put up some contact details at the end of the session um, and if you reach out to us we can help put you in contact with London Medical Laboratory um, I know there are a few other providers such as Medichex who I think are a, a middleman between uh, the doctor's laboratory the doctor's laboratory have I think they have a lab in Manchester and they also have a lab in Bristol I think so there are alternatives around um, We've just seen a, a a very good experience and pharmacy focus from London Medical Laboratory who are really keen to get their tests um, into a, into the network of pharmacies and, and and generate the results that we're seeing at some of the other pharmacies through the marketplace. So this brings me on to uh, Chittal, Chittal Patel. Chittal is um, superintendent pharmacist at Murray's Chemist and Travel Clinic. Chittal was one of the very first people who I spoke to uh, when I moved across to patient about patient access for professionals and and use of the patient access marketplace and Chittal was as an early adopter and someone who already offered a lot of services at his pharmacy was really really keen to get set up um, so just before we introduce Chittal they're, they're offering around 75 different services through patient access um, they get an average of 60 bookings a month for those services so they get a consistent and steady flow of of bookings coming through. Um, they've had about 1300 bookings in total since they joined the platform. Um, and they're getting around £2,000 average monthly gross revenue through patient access. That doesn't include for uh, NHS service re reimbursement or other free services which they offer in the pharmacy. Um, so hi, Chittal, how are you doing? I think you're on mute, Chittal. Happens to me about four times a day, don't worry. Hey Richard. Hey, Richard. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on the call this evening. Yes, my pleasure. Um, so I don't want to take up too much of your time this evening, um, but obviously I've given a bit of background into you know your use of PA Pro and you've been on the platform now through the pandemic, pre-pandemic, now coming out of it. Um, so I, I had a few questions that I wanted to ask you, if that's okay. Um, yeah, sure. So what's the increase in footfall like being to the pharmacy since you started using PA Pro and since you've introduced some of these services? Um, so obviously pre-pandemic when we started, you know, um, there was a lot of uptake on travel vaccines and, and things before we went into a national lockdown. Um, a lot of the patients that we saw that came into our pharmacy were not usually our regular customers. So there could be people traveling up to an hour possibly at times to try and find a service which they wanted, like you said, urgently or immediately, which they could get pretty much on the same day. So these are so, patients who are traveling from other areas around you, specifically to your pharmacy to come and get services that you're offering? That's right. That That's really interesting. Um, so, in, and, and lots of these patients were new patients, patients who you hadn't particularly seen before in your pharmacy. Yeah, majority of these patients we've probably never seen ever before. Um, I always like to ask where people come in for a consultation just to see where, how far they've come. And generally, majority of the time, people have come quite far or slightly a couple of miles away, but they never knew you were there before. OK. Um, do, do you see any repeat business from these patients? Have you seen any repeat business? What's it been um, like? depending, 
depending on the service, you know, I've seen up to two or three times some people have returned for repeat business, but I guess it varies on the service and what um, their health needs are. For example, like, you know, they've booked like a hepatitis B uh, vaccination, which is a series of vaccinations. They'll have booked the first one, they'll come back again and again to finish their course at the same place. Nice. Um, what, one thing which I, I know we've spoken about before, so I know you're aware, but when the pandemic kicked off, I know that we saw that, you know, bookings for travel vaccinations and standard PGDs kind of vanished into thin air as people stopped traveling and people stopped going out and about. Um, so I know that we spoke when we first introduced the blood testing services on patient access um, back in, I think it was August or September last year when we first started talking about it. What's it been like introducing those services into your pharmacy? How, how How's that worked for you? Yeah, I think it was perfect timing, actually, because obviously at the time, you know, we weren't doing much other private services like travel vaccines when we were in a lockdown. And when blood tests came about, you know, we jumped quite quickly at the opportunity to provide this service. And suddenly people were able to get affordable tests at a click of a button um, there's lots of online companies that do it, you know, like I said, Medichex, a driver, uh, but there's always barriers, you know, I've seen people who've booked online tests before and then they've come in for a test in person because they've said they've tried numerous times finger cooking themselves and it always goes wrong or they can't draw blood or a clot by the time it's reached the lab. So a lot of patients would actually prefer to go in person and visit a pharmacy or a clinic where they could have their blood taken. Um, and get results quite quickly. Yeah, so I mean, I've heard anecdotally um, that like up to 40 or 50% of patients aren't comfortable pricking their own finger or drawing their own blood. So I guess it must be really, you know, it must be easier for them to come into your pharmacy and get that service from you directly. Oh yeah, I mean, I've tried myself to prick myself to get my own blood and it's a nightmare. Okay, and, and, and did you, were you a phlebotomist before you began offering these services or, or did you do the training with London Medical Laboratory? I can't remember. No, obviously they started their training quite recently. I think I'd done my training around a similar time actually to when um, they went live. So maybe a month before that. And then just the two things went hand in hand. You know, you approached me about their blood testing services and I'd just done the training coincidentally. Okay, M must have been fate, I guess. <laughs> Okay, and um, one other question I wanted to ask you, um, how's the calendar system and, and, you know, the ability to manage your availability through patient access for professionals, has that had any impact or change on the way that you manage bookings or how you manage workflow and services for patients? Yeah, I think that's, it's really great feature actually to have a calendar where you can, you know, organize your day, your breaks, your workflow around patients' uh, appointments and you can, um, work out rotors for staff and you could see when you've got quite a lot of bookings you might need more staff at a specific amount of time so if someone's doing a morning shift and you might actually you know we need more staff in the evening so it helps plan rotors as well um, and also you know obviously you don't want too many people waiting around in the pharmacy right now obviously since the pandemic so having a booking system you know make sure that people come at a specific time you can factor in breaks in between patients so um, you haven't got too many people and you've got time to recoup yourself after your um, appointment. Yeah, I know I know from, you know, I, I, I'll often log in and have a look at your calendar just to see how you're doing, you know, once in a blue moon. And I know that you've got a number of different calendars set up because you don't offer all services at the same time. So I know, for example, you know, you've got a blood testing calendar, which you open up when you're in the store um, and then you've got an all services calendar which runs maybe a bit more broadly across the pharmacy opening hours and then you've got a separate flu calendar which you run and then I know I think you've got one for another member of staff which is just for them which is open just when they're working so I guess in that respect you know patients can see what services are available when and and it's not just a free for all you don't have to tell them you know I'll oh, come in on Wednesday or Thursday they can just book yeah it's quite good obviously you don't want to people to book appointments and you have to cancel because you're not available, you're not in store. So it's good to have different calendars where 
uh, the right member of staff who's able to provide that service will be working on that day. Brilliant. OK, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, Chitla. I know you've had a busy day in the pharmacy and you've and you've rushed home to, to help us um, on this call and, and give some insights into your use of PA Pro. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Richard. Thanks. So just moving across now um, to questions and answers. I'm just going to see what questions we have here. What is the fee? OK, so this is a question from Anonymous. Um, what is the fee for London Medical Laboratory Services for the pharmacy, if at all? That's a brilliant question. Really, really good question. So London Medical Laboratory charge you nothing up front. Um, so they'll give you the test kits um, they'll give you the training um, and they'll also get you set up with the services and the portal for no fee. They will only charge you once a test has been delivered and the sample has been tested at the laboratory. So from a revenue holding perspective, you will only be charged once you have received payment from the patient. So you'll only pay out once you have the money in. Uh, I hope that answers that question. Um, do you have to have a named doctor attached to the pharmacy in offer in order to offer the lab testing phlebotomy service? Um, so I, I'm not a pharmacist. Um, I think maybe um, Chitter will be able to help here, but as far as I'm aware, and having spoken to London Medical Laboratory and a few other labs about this, Phlebotomy isn't um, a fully regulated service, so I don't think you have to be a pharmacist to offer phlebotomy service. I think anyone can theoretically be a phlebotomist so long as they've undergone training and they've done, I think it's 15 or 20 supervised blood draws. Is that correct at all? Do you know any, any more information on that? I have a feeling we may have lost Chittle. It's a uh... Screen's frozen in the background, unfortunately. I think we have. So to answer the question, I'm pretty confident that you don't need to be a pharmacist or a doctor in order to be a phlebotomist. We have lots and lots of pharmacies offering these services. Um, I do know that the only stipulation by CQC or the GPHC, I can't remember which one is, you can't be analysing the sample, so you can't be interpreting the results as a pharmacist. That's the only stipulation. So you can do phlebotomy, you can send some samples off to the laboratory, but you just can't interpret the results. So you can't be interpreting the doctor's analysis and then giving a patient your outlook on those results. That's the only um, that's the only thing that I'm aware of that you shouldn't or can't be doing. Um, so again, the next question, do you have to be CQC registered to sign up to the lab testing service? No, you don't. Um, you don't have to be CQC registered. The only thing which you shouldn't be doing is interpreting the results yourself. So the patient gets results sent from the lab by a doctor. It'll have their results on there. If the patient wants to speak to someone about their results, they either need to go and see their GP or they need to go and speak to the doctor at the laboratory and call the laboratory. But you don't need to be CQC registered to offer that service, no. Um, and then we have a few requests here to add people to the newsletter, which we certainly will do. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, can, can I ask a, ask a yeah, question, Richard? Yeah, um, I was just wondering for any pharmacies who aren't using PA Pro at the minute, have you got any tips on kind of what do they need to think about? So, you know, speak to you in terms of getting set up with, with the system, but is there anything that they need to think about to get their services up and running? Yeah, so you can use any PGD provider you like. We're, we're again, we're agnostic. Um, Proscript Connect have their own PGD solution um, called Clinical Service Hub. So you can use your Proscript Connect. So the PGD solution is in Proscript Connect. Uh, you can also use, you know, Pharma Doctor, Sona Informatics, any PGD provider which you like. So the first step would be getting a PGD provider training up on some of the top services, uh, reaching out to us, getting set up, opening an account with us 
and then speaking with a member of our team or with London Medical Laboratory to get you help set up with some of the other services. Fab, thanks, Richard. We might have Chisel back. I'm, I'm not sure if he's there. Chisel, are, are you back online with us? I'm back. The screen crashed. Oh, Fab. I was just going to ask one quick question, Chisel. One of the questions which we had was, um, regarding CQC registration to offer blood testing. So I said, as far as I'm aware, you don't need to be CQC registered to offer this service. The only thing that you can't do is interpret the results. Um, that's my understanding. I think the um, nursing director for the lab checked with CQC because we're not actually doing any analysis or anything, um, only taking a sample. Um, she was under the impression that there is no need to be CPC. Yeah, I, I had a similar conversation with the GPHC inspector and they said the same thing. They said, so long as you're not interpreting the results, you know, phlebotomy is completely fine to be doing in the pharmacy. And so long as you're just sending the sample off to the laboratory and the laboratory is doing the actual analysis, then it's absolutely fine. Um, so I don't think we have any questions. Um, but if uh, anyone... As, as Chisel's back, I'm going to jump in with another question, if that's OK. <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted to ask you, so kind of, were you offering um, clinical services before you started using PA Pro? And either either way, kind of, how how has that changed the way that that you kind of manage those services, if you were, or or how did you find it getting up and running with it? Um, yeah, I think obviously there were quite a lot of services, you know, like PGDs, which we routinely offered previously but probably didn't know how to market them as well. Um, and you may occasionally get a booking for a PGD you probably haven't done like six months ago or something, but because of PA, um, it's put you in touch with people who still might have a need for that PGD, for example. Brilliant, thank you. And what do you, do you think there's anything, what do you think's led to, you've obviously been really successful as a pharmacy, um, is there anything in particular that you think has has helped with that? Um, in terms of obviously trying to maximise the number of appointment times that you're able to offer, like Richard was saying, you know, we need to be offering all the possible appointment times. It's quite often that people book very last minute. You know, you rarely get people who book like three weeks in advance. It's always either the night before or the morning off sometimes and suddenly and um, you're doing a service which you probably might have not expected to be doing at that time. Um, but obviously you get a notification straight away as soon as someone books. So it's quite handy that you know that you're expecting someone. Bob, thank you. I'll, I'll hand back to you, Richard. You're on mute, Richard. Rookie error. Um, so I was just saying thank you very much Liz, uh, thank you Chittle. Um, for anyone in the session who has any questions um, after this, please do uh, get in contact with us. So I've just put some contact details on the screen. So if you want to get in touch with the uh, community pharmacy sales team, they can help with any questions that you may have. Their email address is communitypharmacy at emishealth.com. Uh, those questions will come to me and the rest of the team. Uh, and if you have any questions for me directly, please do email me uh, on richard.perich at emishealth.com. And thank you everyone for, for attending. I was just going to say, Richard, there's a couple of questions that have actually come in. I don't know if you want to pick those up while we've still got oh. a, a little bit of time. Yeah, sure, yeah. So one of them is, do you have to be UKAS registered? UKAS registered, no, you don't have to be UKAS registered. Um, the laboratory is an approved UCAS registered laboratory for both COVID testing and blood testing services. So because they're the ones processing the sample, um, you don't need to be yourself. And there's another one saying, uh, somebody who missed the beginning of the session saying, is PA Pro available on ProScript Connect? Also, does it have to be for PGDs only or can it be used for pharmacist IP services? So it can be used for pharmacist IP services. Um, so long as you're adhering to the service description of the service. So when you're on PA Pro and you add the service, every service has a service description. So if we use um, 
for example, rabies vaccination, it will say to the patient when they book the service, you are booking one dose. So, so long as you're adhering to the amount which is described in the service description and what you're charging for, that's absolutely fine. So, so long as you're sticking to the service description, you can offer that service through a pharmacist IP service, of course. Doesn't need to be a PGD. And you can use any PGD provider which you uh, which you wish. Uh, this is the only thing that we've got in there. OK, and I was just, is PA Pro available on Proscript Connect? Uh, yes, it is. So it's agnostic. Any pharmacy can sign up to PA Pro. Um, and there is also the possibility of adding it as a tab in Proscript Connect. So we can help you add a shortcut so that you can access the calendar in Proscript Connect. That's something which the service desk should be able to help you with. If not, you can send me an email and I can help you get it into Proscript Connect, of course. But if anyone does have any questions, um, I'll, I will add everyone onto the newsletter um, and please do send over any questions to us directly. And thank you everyone for attending. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Chittle.